Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tracy and if you don't know me, I have a passion for upcycling clothing and I teach sewing on here. I'm finally back in New York City. I took a much needed break in California. I had a lot of things going on. I had the sewing camp I was teaching. I was also making a custom lingerie for the bride to be and I made a dress that I wore to the wedding. So this is it. This was other fabric I eco printed a while ago. So I was able to make like two dresses. I made a size small and a size medium. I love how they both turned out and they will be up on my Etsy for Sale. This is the silk strapless dress, but I added straps to it. So I will link the tutorial for this dress if you're interested. I just had the best month within my business, which was very exciting. I'm still being overwhelmed with so many messages on these like silk dresses. I am planning to do a made to order drop soon. I just don't know when. I do have to go back to California again for personal reasons. I have a few custom orders. I'm so excited to start on. So I will be vlogging my whole process. I hope you guys enjoy this behind the scenes of the sewing camp and just making some lingerie and these two silk dresses and thank you guys so much for watching the first day of sewing camp all the girls worked on their mood boards i just taught them about the basic fundamentals of fashion design and just gave them a bit of an intro so the rest of the day they just had at it with their creativity it was an amazing experience co-teaching with my old sewing teacher she taught me how to sew in this very room they all presented their mood boards at the end of the day and it was nice to hear everyone's aesthetics and what they were inspired by. The second day of the sewing camp, I taught the girls the difference between woven and knit fabric. So they did a little weaving project with ribbon and then they got into designing their patchwork tops. At the end of day two, I just had a little eco printing project for them. So we just got a whole yard of silk and they all just added leaves. And then I just took the bundle home and steamed it. So the next day we could make scrunchies with the fabric. My niece wanted to help unravel this bundle and wash the fabric with me. Day three of the sewing camp, I brought back the silk fabric and they loved how the print turned out. So I just demoed a quick scrunchie tutorial for all of them. I was very impressed with all of their sewing skills. We took some pictures of the scrunchies in our hair and then I demoed pattern making and they worked on their fashion figures. Day four, they all had their pattern pieces, so they just started cutting everything out for their tops, and I taught a lot of them how to use an overlock machine for the first time, so that was such a fun experience, showing them how to use an overlock machine, especially with knits. It's the best machine to use with them. And on day five, we just took a bunch of photos and just finished the hems and armholes for these tops, so I was very proud of them, and this was like an amazing experience I'm never going to forget. Mrs. Meg and I decided this is something we should do every year, so I can't wait for the next fashion design sewing camp. These were the amazing fabrics I found at Fab Scrap. So I found two amazing laces and this really cool tool that had beading on it. I think it was supposed to be a veil of some sort, but I was so glad I found this at Fab Scrap. I only spent a total of $5. For the underwire, I like to thrift bras and just repurpose the ones that are damaged. So I just removed the underwire and just use it to make new things. And here I am just sewing and attaching this underwire channel. So I get a lot of my bra making supplies from Bias Bespoke. So they're located in New York, but they also sell on Etsy and Amazon. So I can link them down below for you guys. And making a bra is a bit difficult just because there's a lot of components to it. So the best way I learned to make a bra is to like take one apart and cut out new pieces and then re-sew it. And that's how we learned at FIT. And once you're comfortable with sewing a bra, then you can work from the pattern and manipulate the pattern and just come up with like endless amount of bra designs. And here I am just sewing the garter together. Um, I only had like seven or eight pins for this whole project because I could not find my pins at all, the ones I had in California. I had like a whole box of them and I just don't know where they are. But here I am just pinning with like the few pins I had. Um, yeah, but don't worry, the next day I ended up going to the store to get more, so um, that ended up getting resolved. I decided on the closure just to do loops and buttons because it is a bridal lingerie piece, so I thought it would make it more bridal. After sewing the garter together, I just take some decorative elastic to cover my seams since I like to sew them to the outside because it'll give me a really nice clean finish on the inside. So I just go ahead and stitch on either side of that elastic. I like to leave a tail of elastic for the garter clip at the princess seam. 
I always have a lighter on hand because when I work with these like elastics or stretch laces, it's just so much easier to finish like certain ends. So before I actually sew in my garter clips or straps, I like to burn the elastic end so it melts and it doesn't fray. I sewed in the garter clips, so I get my garter clips from Stitch Love Studio and I added the waistband, so this is what the garter looks like so far. And here's this like giant pieces tool like I got from Fab Scrap and like this beading on it was just amazing. I swear it was supposed to be a veil or something, but it was so gorgeous I like had to pick it up. It was so perfect for this bridal look I wanted to make. And I ended up deciding I kind of want to do like this like gathered flirty skirt at the bottom of the garter belt just to kind of give it a bit more of a flare. I cut the tool around the beading and just made it a long strip of fabric so it was pretty much just a rectangle and then I just did two rows of stay stitching so I could just like pull the back thread and just gather so I would get this flouncy effect. The more and more I worked on this lingerie piece, I fell in love with it and I just wish it was mine, but I hope the bride really enjoys it. And now for the center back closure, I'm using these buttons and I also got them at Fab Scrap. Still can't believe it was $5 with the fabric. It just still blows my mind. Um, so I'm just drawing them on by hand and using my invisible ink marker to mark the placement of them. The finishing touches on this piece, I just took more of that beaded tool and just cut out some applique and just kind of pinned it in place and just hand sewed it down. I gifted it to her the day before the wedding, so we were at the rehearsal dinner and this venue was absolutely breathtaking. And here's just a little time lapse of me making my dress for the wedding. On the day of the wedding, I just paired the dress with this green mini bag and I thrifted these really gorgeous satin orange kitten heels. I hope you guys enjoyed this little glimpse of my days in California. Thank you so much for watching.